Hello everybody and welcome back to our YouTube channel where today we will be doing a video on problem management which is obviously a key concept within our ITIL framework. Now let's start with a quick overview of problem management from an ITIL perspective. Now the core purpose of problem management is to identify and eliminate the root causes of incidents, so not just fix the symptoms. There are two primary approaches. Firstly, reactive, where we respond to patterns in reoccurring incidents. And secondly, proactive, where we use trend analysis to identify issues before they cause disruptions. Now, ultimately, the goal is to improve service quality by reducing the number and impact of incidents over time. Now, let's look at how this comes to life in ServiceNow. ServiceNow provides a full life cycle for problem management that aligns with ITIL best practices. Everything from problem logging to root cause analysis and known error tracking. A huge advantage is the ability to link related incidents directly to a problem record, which helps identify patterns very quickly. You can also publish workarounds into the knowledge base for reuse. You can apply SLAs, automate escalations, and leverage visual task boards for team collaboration. Now, before we get into a demonstration of this in the platform, what's the actual process we'll see? Firstly, it's that detection of the problem record. Secondly, the in investigation that takes place, so analyzing that root cause and documenting a workaround. The third stage is all around resolving it and implementing a fix. And then lastly, we'll close that problem down. So let's see this in action. Let's have a very quick look at problem management within the ServiceNow platform. Now, I am impersonating Laxmi, who is one of our agents operating within the service operations workspace. Now, as soon as she comes into that landing page, she's got a configurable view of the incidents that she's working on, those incident SLAs, any announcements that she needs to access straight from this landing page. But today, obviously, we're going to go into her lists and start looking at those incidents that she's been working on. So this particular incident that's been assigned to Laxmi is regarding not being able to send an email using Outlook as a software tool. Now, Laxmi can obviously summarize this um, using the Now Assist capabilities within ServiceNow. She can draw a picture of the summary. She can see the impact, so which configuration item and service has been affected. And she can obviously drill down into the details as well. Now, I'm sure this is familiar to a lot of people who use the workspace and you might be thinking, but how can I create a problem off the back of this? Now, using the right hand sidebar in the workspace, we have a tool called Agent Assist. Now, Agent Assist is using the power of predictive intelligence and machine learning within ServiceNow to essentially show you or tell you from previous incidents or previous tickets that have come through what the best outcome is for maybe solving this particular incident. So on the agent assist, I have different options to select, but Laxman is going to have a look and see if there's any other open incidents that might be similar because she's getting pinged in her inbox. She can see a lot of things that might be actually similar here. As soon as she opens those incidents, she can see that there are a lot of incidents that seem to be implying that Outlook has gone down. Now, the first thing Laxmi can do is go ahead and start tying all these incidents together. So she can actually use the incident I have open as the parent incident. She can say there seems to be a problem and we can actually link all of the incidents together. And I would say that this is a huge advantage of using the ServiceNow operations workspace is that you can see all of the incidents that have been tied together. As soon as we go in and create our problem, you can see all of that. It's all linked back to that original incident. But not only that, your agents aren't having to click between different screens and find maybe where the incident was and now where the problem is in a different tab. Instead, everything opens up within the service operations workspace for us. So the next stage is obviously to create that problem. So if I just go to the drop down on the UI action at the top, 
I can go ahead and simply select create a problem. And as I just said, we can see that all of the records are tied together. So it's easy for our agents to click back. They need to go back to that details tab for that incident, or if they're working on the problem, it's all really easy to navigate. So initially, it's a very similar view to our incident that we just saw. We can see the priority, the state, affected service, configuration item, etc. We can have a look at the details page, which is obviously telling us more information about what's being pulled through from the incident. But what we want to focus on is this out of the box problem workflow. So here we've got the stages that Laxmi needs to go through to create this problem. First of all, she can see a summary of exactly what's going on. She can see the incident that's been tied to it. She can see a problem statement and the description that was created off the back of the incident. And she can confirm that this is what she will be working on. As soon as she's confirmed that, she will start the analysis of what is actually going on with this particular issue. Now, as one example, if she goes into that details tab and she wants to have a look at a dependency view, she can access that, as I said, all from the workspace. Now, when we open up our dependency view, in order for Laxmi to do root cause analysis, this is really, really going to help her because it's telling her which email serv or which service is affected, which in this case is obviously the email service, but she can see every other configuration item and how it's tied together. She can obviously also control how she wants to look at that dependency view, whether it's using a vertical or horizontal, but this is really helping her to have a look at the upstream and downstream um, views of what is going on with these particular CIs. Now, if we return to our problem and to our whole overview, we can start adding in analysis information. So as Laxmi is going ahead and trying to find out this root cause analysis, she can start actually documenting workarounds or just any notes that needed to be add, added to our work notes activity stream. So as an example, we can enter a workaround into our service operations workspace. So I've just simply copied and pasted some information that might be useful to our users. We can link maybe a known error article. So if we've actually created an article because we know that this workaround is gonna help temporarily, we can just go ahead and essentially save this and publish this information to users. So as soon as we share that workaround, it might potentially publish to the employee center, the portal, or however you want to notify your users of this workaround. Now, the next stage for Laxmi is creating problem tasks, which again, very easy to navigate in the service operations workspace. It's all under this problem. It's as easy as creating a new problem task. So for this, we're gonna say it's to do with the root cause analysis and in a very similar format to what we've seen before, the field is exactly the same. So we can add in our short description. So for example, I'm going to put here that we need to collect the logs from affected clients. I'm then going to just put a couple of notes in into the description. The assignment, we can assign this to maybe Caleb, who's our manager, and then save that problem task here. If I have a look back at our original problem, I can see that my problem task has been created. And if I go to the overview, we'll also be able to see that there's things being populated within our workflow process to show that there are problem tasks. It's also the same process as well for the fixed tasks as well, and whether we're adding change requests or having to create change requests off the back of this problem. Now, if we know our root cause analysis or we know we need to create a change, we can go to our fix. So we can say what the cause is. Uh, so for example, I'm going to say something like Outlook has gone into overdrive and I'll just keep dot 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 to save you having to see me type it all. And then we can put in our fix notes as well.
which is obviously going to be substantially longer than what I've done, but just to prevent you having to see me type it all out, that's sort of our next stage. Again, within our problem, we can still access that impact um, of the email and the configuration item, but we can also keep our colleagues in the loop. So if anyone else is potentially aware of this problem that's being created, the work notes will just keep everyone on the same page. Now, we can either accept the risk or we can maybe reanalyze. So perhaps the risk is off the back of creating a change. Um, have we actually checked the timeline for that? But just to show you, we're going to accept the risk and submit it. And then obviously we have gone ahead and resolved our particular problem. So this video has just shown you the process of creating a problem off the back of an incident. In this case, we've been able to use that out of the box workflow to show Laxmi all the stages she needs to do to actually investigate the problem. We were able to see how we could do an element of root cause analysis utilizing the dependency views um, and being able to see that impacted CI within the service map. And then we can go through that process of seeing how she can actually create those problem tasks and the fixed tasks in order to actually fix this problem. I hope that was helpful and I will see you very soon.